The U.S. economy is in a depression, the worst crisis in over 70 years. The so-called experts had no clue that the crisis was coming, but they now admit that there's something terribly wrong with the system. Liberals decry the casino of Wall Street, call for new regulations. But the cause of the crisis is much deeper. This video explains how this happened and why it proves that the capitalist system itself is to blame and must be replaced to cancel out the boom and bust cycles. Total unemployment stood at 12, 17% in October 2009. Black youth unemployment now stands at over 40%, not including the millions in jail. Two million workers have lost their homes, three and a half million are homeless, and we're still being told to invest our money in the stock market where many have been wiped out. 40 million live below the poverty line, 47 million have no medical coverage, and those that are covered are receiving some of the worst medical care in the world at the highest prices. The crisis is characterized by a shrinking economy, which fell at the rate of nearly 6%. Over 8 million jobs have been lost since October 2008. This crisis began when a bubble of fake values in the housing market burst, throwing workers out of their homes and ruining the banking system. Dozens of mortgage and banking companies collapsed, trillions of dollars of capital and worker savings have disappeared. A bubble means that in the investment has been going up in price simply because people believe that it's going to go up. Bubbles are an integral part of capitalism and have existed as far back as a huge bubble to buy tulip bulbs in Holland occurred over 350 years ago. Bubbles collapse when the investors think that the prices are not going to continue to rise. With basic industry unprofitable, capitalists have sought alternative high return investments such as the dot-com bubble of the 1990s the housing <clears throat> bubble of the 2000s. The housing bubble was actively promoted by Alan Greenspan, head of the Federal Reserve, who was quoted in 2002 as stating, we want to facilitate the extraction of some of the equity that homeowners have built up over the years. Bubbles always burst eventually. It was a subprime crisis caused by the lending of a lot of money to people who couldn't afford it that finally caused the housing mortgage market to collapse, sending many big investment banks into oblivion. The government printed money to save the banks, handing over trillions of dollars with no questions asked. This will surely lead to hyperinflation in the next few years. Meanwhile, the bankers pocketed the money to bolster their stock prices and to provide themselves with huge personal bonuses. And they're still not lending. Capitalism is a worldwide system, and so the crisis spread around the globe. A multi-trillion dollar financial loss is hard to imagine. Here we have a trillion dollars depicted next to a man who is dwarfed by the size of the pile of money that a trillion dollars represents. The U.S. government did not have any money for New Orleans or for education, and yet had trillions for banks and military. There's no money for schools. School funding is cut and cut and cut again. Thousands of teachers have been laid off. Classrooms are crowded, making it difficult to read and learn and many teacher, teenagers do not know how to read and cannot do simple math. Medical care is scarce and inadequate. The money is spent on imperialist wars for oil control. The welfare of the American workers has no priority. Billions are spent at <clears throat> an end-of-life profitable care, while simple preventive and maintenance care is simply not covered. This miserable system results in the hardest impact on blacks, Latins, women, and small children. Why has the economy collapsed? The, price, the press blames a few bad actors on Wall Street and in the banking industry, such as Bernie Madoff. But the problem is really much deeper than a few greedy individuals. U.S. manufacturing has been on a down, downward slide uh, for the last 50 years, 
due to increased competition from abroad. The profit rate of manufacturing has been dropping steadily since 1964. The decline of profits in the basic manufacturing sector is associated with an increase in productivity and a decrease in the size of the workforce. Less and less of U.S. profits comes from manufacturing. Meanwhile, productivity has skyrocketed. It's increased five-fold since 1950, meaning that it takes about less than one-fifth the number of workers to create the same number of goods as it did in 1950. The automobile industry, which drives the whole economy, cannot compete with the newer factories and cheaper labor in Japan, Germany, and Korea. Practically every other manufacturing industry is in shock trying to compete with China. As a result, profits in American manufacturing industry have fallen, General Motors has gone bankrupt, investment has flowed into these financial bubbles. Unable to sustain, sustain growth even in those areas, there's been a massive collapse. Trying to keep consumers buying, the U.S. government has lowered interest rates to make homes and credit cheaper. And even with these huge credit card loans, Americans with money are not buying all of the available goods. The markets are totally saturated. What we are seeing here in action is the falling rate of profit. Marx said that the, the, a law of capitalism is the tendency for the rate of profit to fall. The reason for this tendency is really competition from other capitalists. To keep up with the competition, manufacturers pour on more automation and cut the labor force. But this lowers profits, because profits are generated by workers' labor. Machines make workers more productive, but they don't create new value. That is why products generally become cheaper when they are produced by more advanced machinery. The more machinery, the less profit. This is because all value stems from labor, the labor theory of value. To illustrate this, consider the way automation and mechanizations increase. Contrast the price of the first computers, which cost millions of dollars, with a machine produced today of the same computing power for less than $100. Seeing their profits fall, capitalists try to solve the problems in several ways. Automation, lowering wages, union busting, moving factories to low-wage regions and countries, and changing to other forms of business. They create a vicious circle, because lowering costs means job loss leads to fewer buyers for the goods, which further lowers the profits, leading back to lowering the prices of their goods, thus laying off more people. Capitalists must accept high risks because they cannot manage risk. By definition, capitalism is anarchy. The capitalists do not plan production or cooperate in any reasonable way. Capitalists must compete and they must grow. Otherwise, they'll be defeated by other capitalists. There's no choice. It's like a marathon with no goal line. The runners keep running and running until they fall down. There is always someone else to pass them up. The new capitalists who just started running past the worn out, older capitalists. One consequence of this competition is too many factories and overproduction. Too many goods, too few buyers. Eventually, we have the collapse. Crises of overproduction are inevitable when competing capitalists control the economy. The main source of profit becomes speculation, not the real economy, thus bubbles. The housing bubble produced a fourfold increase in the number of houses in the last gasp before it collapsed in 2007. These crises every few years from the processes we're discussing results in depression, bankruptcy, and war. Businesses close can be summed up by simply saying there's just not enough money left, not enough credit left, not enough buyers left. Meanwhile, the U.S. government has been pumping money into the economy to give people money to buy things. Eventually, money from the government will lose its value. Any strategy based on debt is doomed. Witness the current collapse in the economy. Meanwhile, the crisis also leads to international implications. The crisis of major capitalist powers increasing their rivalry with each other increases the importance of war, especially war for critical resources like oil. 
and the oil pipelines. As a strategy to control and defeat their rivals, the U.S. aim in Iraq and Afghanistan was and is to control the oil and gas and the pipelines that deliver them, thus creating a powerful tool for the U.S. capitalists against their rivals. Wars for oil and other resources are essential to capitalism because capitalists have to destroy competitor economies. War creates a clean slate, eliminates overcapacity, resets the profit scale, and destroys the competition, incidentally causing millions to die with massive destruction and misery. But war is the ultimate stimulus package and is used freely by the capitalists when times get tough. Trying to stay on top is the world's sole superpower. U.S. war spending tops all of the priorities, even bailing out the banks and the auto companies. And this spending, caused by the federal government to cut back on payments to states, such as Medicaid and education. Sucking the money out of the states this way, the federal spending spree has created a financial crisis in most of the states in the United States. Cuts in public services and unemployment fall most heavily on black and Latin workers. Workers must overcome racial divisions to strengthen the fight against the system that has trillions for war but nothing for workers. Workers need to fight back against the racism like these workers did in Cincinnati in 2001. <clears throat> U.S. capitalists hope that they can fix their economy and hold back their rival capitalists so they can stay on top. But capitalism always leads to crisis and then to war. It will continue an endless up and down path unless the workers overthrow the system. It is up to us to organize the revolutionary movement and stop this madness. Regulation is worthless. Wall Street runs the government, not the other way around. Goldman Sachs run, populates the U.S. Treasury Department. Wall Street rules Geithner and the entire Washington apparatus. The government does not tell Wall Street what to do. Wall Street tells Washington what to do. Witness the thievery by the Wall Street bankers of the U.S. Treasury. In response to the recent economic meltdown, the U.S. banking industry received trillions with no questions asked. Obama's change in Washington is a joke. The fat cats still rule. Responding to their economic crises and the challenge of their growing rivals like China, Russia, and Europe, the U.S. capitalists need to move towards fascism. This means patriotism, fear, and racism to gain support for the war, misleading and oppressing any opposition, prisons, surveillance, immigration raids, torture, elimination of civil rights, cutting wages and pensions, increasing the size and capabilities of the military, and building up war production industries, and in some cases disciplining some of the capitalists who aren't playing ball. The reforms of Roosevelt and Johnson have been wiped out while the economic crisis has deepened. New reforms are less and less achievable even when they succeed. However, reforms keep the basic system of capitalism in place. It is essential that we do not lose sight of the absolute need to change the system, not reform it. The result of the current crisis has already been war, job losses, wage cuts, cuts in welfare, cuts in health care, greater levels of racism, huge cuts in education. We need a mass movement against these ills, and we need to bring revolutionary ideas into the movement, since reforms simply don't work. <coughs> Once capitalism is destroyed, workers can create a system without wars, banks, or crises, in which everyone contributes. The system is called communism, run by the workers without bosses forever. What you can do is become part of that movement, overcome war, crises, and fascism, and build a new communist society. You can start by reading and distributing Challenge, the Progressive Labor Party newspaper. Look for progressive labor activities in your area. <clears throat>